Okay, aloha. This is the Think Tech Hawaii, and uh, it's Monday, and this show is the state of the state of Hawaii. So welcome. I am your, I am your host, Stephanie Stoll Dalton. Today, our topic is to focus on actually a little noticed activity in one of Hawaii's outstanding public spaces. And I know you know it well, it's Ala Moana Beach Park. Now, when you're in there, if you're near the tennis courts, you may have seen a low white brick wall and the white wall encloses a large manicured green built over a coral foundation many decades ago uh, and made especially for the ancient and genteel sport of lawn bowling. Now that is actually alive and well as a sport here in, in Honolulu. And uh, my guest today will show and share, show some pictures and share about this sport and, uh, it, where, and where it's played in, on its very beautiful uh, home green. So today I welcome Shannon Fagan, who's president of the Lawn Bowls Club and Judy Rasmussen, who I know is a champion bowls player and special events coordinator for the club, and Barry White, who's the membership uh, promoter to be here with us today. So welcome Shannon, Judy, and Barry, and thank you so much for participating today and to bring some attention to what I'm describing as a little noticed uh, activity because it seems um, like a, a very large space uh, with very dedicated players and probably could use a lot more of them. But I think it might be interesting to just talk a little bit about your involvement in the club and get into the history of it. So Shannon, why don't, as the president, why don't you tell us about how you came to it and, uh, and then we'll talk about the history. Certainly, like local um, involvement often starts for us. I got involved with members that were, had been there for a number of years, and I've now been bowling with them for just over, getting close to about a year and a half, actually. What's fascinating about the club, uh, as you talk about the history, is that as a genteel sport, it did not start as a genteel location in the city, actually. It starts from the dredging of the Alawai Canal, and that earth was put over the coral foundation, what was uh, low-level trees, in the city refuge site. Now this was in the back uh, end of the 1920s into the mm -hmm. early 30s when the city then dedicated that land to be a uh, park for the city of Honolulu that was then forming. In 1934 okay. Roosevelt came through and cut a, a flower ribbon and mm -hmm. uh, entered the park and we started seeing the start of the lawn bowls around 1935 or so when they formed the green. Now when uh, uh, I believe the president uh, Roosevelt was out here dedicating this That's right. Mm -hmm. right? So it has a rather auspicious beginning. And the uh, Mr. McCoy did some oversight um, of the development of the green also, because that's a complicated uh, project. If you're not just dumping dirt there, you've got to do some things obviously, which has the coral foundation. So it drains well, and then you have to have enough dirt or soil to be able to grow. Um, the, the grass nicely. And there's a, a person that is uh, very specialized in that, that works at the club now to mention his name and thank him later. Wonderful piece of work that's being done because you can see it from afar and it's quite beautiful. Well, what else about the history? When did the actual, who, who was playing back in 30, what is that, 1935? 1930s. So it got started around 1937, a man by the name of Dr. Richard Ebsworth, who had been coming to Honolulu from Australia, was interested in bringing the game from that country into uh, Hawaii, which was a, a territory soon to become a state, and then had uh, petitioned the city to take a look at building the green together with an architect firm called Harry Sims Bent. And that's the same firm that had built some of the monuments that are in the club, or excuse me, in the park uh, to this day, including the Waikiki Bridge, which is where Roosevelt entered the park uh, upon the dedication. And the, the green stayed there and was used through World War II. And uh, upon the breakout of World War II, uh, it was turned over to the US military. And the army used it as uh, some storage facility and some light training. And uh, it actually, uh, ironically, after having been built and all the time spent to develop the green, went uh, into uh, disrepair and was overgrown uh, as, as a green through about the 1960s, through, so through the Korean War and into the 1960s. And by the 1960s, 
the Parks Department had again been petitioned by someone who had come down this time from Seattle and was interested in the game, a man by the name of Mr. Kirk uh, Gillum. And he was, uh, Gilman, excuse me, was part of uh, Senior Citizens Club that the Parks Department had put together and which later actually formulated into what now we know as the Honolulu Lawn Bowls Club. That was uh, how the name transitioned from that with a focus on a parks activity for locals in the Honolulu area. 1969, towards the late 60s, they actually took what was uh, the original Paragola, which was the area that they had probably bougainvillea or vine uh, flower growing, and that was changed into a clubhouse, which now contains a locker room, restroom facilities, and uh, repair facility. And then that was uh, put to the historic register of places in the state of Hawaii. And if you want a bowl in Hawaii, this is the place to go. It's the only place that we have in the entire state. <laughs> Well, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the bowling. So we're mostly familiar with going to the bowling alley with our great big ball, right, Wayne, whatever, and our shoes and everything. So what is, what is the game actually like? That Barry, maybe you can talk a little bit about what the game is like. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it definitely is a little bit different than your bowling alley bowling. Uh, <laughs> the bowl, uh, which is what we call the, the ball that's about this large. Uh, we use that to roll it down from one end of the green down to where we have thrown something called the jack. It's basically a small white, uh, very similar to a billiard ball. Um, so, perfect. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you for the picture. So yeah. you can see where the white, the white ball is down there. We will sit down, stand down at one end and then we will roll our bowl down and try to get as close as possible to the white jack. We will go, one person will go, then another person goes, another, then another. We'll sometimes play uh, where we have teams of two. We'll sometimes play teams of three uh, against each other. And sometimes we'll even do it where we've got what we call a swing, where we have an extra person who goes, you know, one after the other. But uh, the, you know, the name of the game is go back and forth about 12 to 14 times. Uh, see who can get closest to the jack each time. If you're the one who's closest, then you get the point. If you have three that are closer than your opposition's bowl, you'll get three points. If you only get one that's closer than their bowl, you'll just get one point. Uh, but we do that and see who's got the most points at the end. Well, that's next. a great description. It takes about two hours to play this game. <laughs> There's a measuring tape there. So this is very serious about who's close to the jack and who's not, right? The balls vary too. And the, balls, the balls vary. There's weight, they're weighted. So uh, a forehand shot would roll to the right and toward the jack. Backhand would go the other way and toward the jack. So you can choose which way you want to roll. And some balls have more turn in them than others. Some are straighter. Uh, so that's also a variation in the game. <laughs> so is that, um, that is quite different from alley bowling, right? Or the American pastime that's most uh, popular. There, there isn't in the, in the bowl, big bowling balls, those are supposed to go straight, right? Is, and right. It's They'll put a yeah, I think on with, on yeah. I think a big difference is with uh, regular bowling uh, in an alley that you're using the spin are trying to put spin on it to change the angle to get it to go where you want it, uh, which is different from you know the game of bowls because with the game of bowls, your whole goal is to throw it as straight in the direction that you want, and because of the way that the bowl is actually shaped, it will turn on its own. As Judy was mentioning, uh, you've got to kind of learn how much it's going to turn, and and just as Judy said, you know it turns differently depending on what kind of bowl that you have. Uh, Judy's goes really straight and she's really good. Mine have a little bit more curve to them. So I have to account for that every time I throw them. But uh, I don't put any spin on it. You just throw it straight and, and learn how it's going to go. Their own ball. So that's why having your own bowling balls, your little set of those is advantageous, right? Because you want to practice, yes, with the same ones. You want to keep practicing with the same ones. Uh, and then get used to them. But even each rink, each rink that you go on of the eight rinks in each direction, that's 16 rinks you could be on. And it varies. 
it varies at every rink how your bowl is going to roll, you know, the grass conditions and was it, was it rolled that day or not rolled and was it cut short or not cut yet or there's a lot of variations. There's been times in the park's history when they survey the land and then they will take up the grass and put it back down because there are uneven undulations of the, of the natural uh, earth yeah. that's there. Mm -hmm. They did it once. Wouldn't mind it if they did it again. <laughs> Probably a, a, a recurring expense. I mean, uh, um, when we afforded. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, the green is lying out there and without knowing the game, um, you're now explaining how there are no markers on that green. There are no lines or anything. They're just whatever the land offers, right? So the people playing the game make it happen through the jack and the balls and imaginary lines, right? So, I, I mean, that's really interesting that there's anything going on there at all. I mean, there's all of this going on, but it doesn't require markings. They're all played within the game. Uh, well, what about during COVID? What kind of a game was this? is this to play during our COVID time? Is it, does it expose people to danger? We were closed for a while. And then when the parks reopened, we started up, but we've always followed the rules very carefully. Uh, like when it was no more than five people together, we had no more than five. Usually it was four in a group. We would only do doubles. Uh, now that it's increased to 10, we can do triple, triples games, you know, or have more people gather around. But even when we have our tournaments and we have, say, maybe 20 people, 22 people on a tournament day, uh, we will keep the, everybody spaced out. So we're trying to always follow that. We also always wear masks. Nobody is even allowed to come in and bowl or even watch without having a mask on. So we're following all the rules. So it has been more difficult through these COVID times. Um, we did have our one tournament, our uh, Barefoot Bowls, last February 2020. And of course, it was canceled 2021. Um, yeah, we, it seems like there'd be uh, a, quite a bit of protection because the the green yeah. is open outside with it, the. It's a low low impact, low contact sport, so mm -hmm. people were naturally spaced out as they play during the downtime between each roll. Right. Well, Barry, why don't you tell us about the membership issues and how people can come in and when can they come in and. How does, you know, those kinds of things. So uh, when you're standing there looking at the low white wall and seeing the green, then what's the next thing you need to think about? Yes, yes, we're always looking for new members. Uh, we have a total of eight different rinks or lanes that we can play in. And typically on our most busy time, which is Saturday, we have the most people show up. Uh, we're usually using no more than four of those. Uh, unless we have tournaments going on. So we can definitely handle a, a number of more people out there. So we, we always encourage, you know, getting some more members out there. What you can do is you can come by at 930 on Saturday morning. We, uh, that's, we usually start at 10 o'clock uh, with the actual game. But at 930, if you're there, we'll walk you through how to play, give you a little lesson. And then if you'd like to, uh, you can stay and, and do a game, um, especially if you're a local, the first couple of games that you do, there's no charge for them. Uh, we want you to test it out and see, you know, if you like it, uh, then, you know, you can decide if you'd like to join after that. You can go to honolulombowls.com and you can also send, you know, an email over to us. And uh, if there's a different time, you know, that you'd like to meet out there, we can also walk you through the game and, and get you accustomed to it. And then you can come out on another time and, and do an actual game with all the members. Now, we were talking about, you know, how it's good to have your own bowls, but the, the club does have a number of bowls already. So you don't have to have any of your own. We'll provide those for you. So all you have to do is basically show up. We, we don't uh, wear any fancy outfits. You, you will have some people in some nice matching clothes when we have a tournament like what you're seeing on the screen. Uh, but just show up in, in typical Hawaiian type of attire and we will get you all set up. Now, for those who are interested in joining, it ends up running just $180 for the entire year. So, I mean, that's a total of about like $15 a month. I don't think there's hardly any sport that you're going to do in Hawaii that you can get as much of a value, you know, out, out of what you pay for it. Uh, and especially, you know, with the, with the beautiful club that we've got there and in Ala Moana Park. I mean, it's one of the best places that we've got in Honolulu. So, I mean, uh, I think 
we're picking up with a few new members pretty much every week over the last few weeks. I think since COVID is kind of dying down a little bit too, we had some more people join. We've had some younger members join. We've got um, an age range probably from the 20s all the way up to, well, at least one who was up in the 80s. So, you know, you can really not uh, play the sport no matter how, how <laughs> what your age is. I'm sorry, what was that, Judy? I said, not me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was that was not Judy. <laughs> I know, I knew who you were mentioning. Just walk in. I mean, how, we have uh, a lot of walk-ins, yeah, on, especially on Saturday, beach goers. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right, so they can feel. Um, does anything happen to them when they walk in? Or they just they walk in and kind of walk around, and then was does somebody talk to them? I guess. Oh, yeah, we we have a number of members that are going to be there and looking for someone who's you know peeking over the the gate or just you know, walking in if we don't recognize them. And we will then kind of get them acquainted to the club, the greens, and then start taking them through a lesson if they would like on how to play it and actually get some experience right away. Well, do you ever have a day dedicated or a Saturday dedicated to welcoming newcomers, like you know, advertising it or um, announcing it as something that, that everybody's welcome to come. I know it costs money. We did. we did have that one time, and that's all I can remember since I joined. I think it was maybe two years ago, and uh, we put out announcements, and uh, we did have a bunch of people come in, and we gave them lessons, and and spent a whole Saturday just doing that. That's a that's a good idea to maybe try that again. That's been a complication because of pandemic times. In order to oh yeah, now we can. So the yeah, tier system would be okay. Sure to pre-advertise it, but it is in the works for the 2021 to do an initiative like that. And we'd like to focus on also bringing in other various groups, such as school groups perhaps it's done. It's very common in the UK or Australia, but it's it's not oh, just yeah. a game of, of adults, of, you know, of high school teams playing. Get the kids going. Yeah, give them a chance. The international playing of this game. Tell us the status of this game around the world. We know that in the United States, it's fairly low, low key and at special places. And maybe it's referred to as bocce ball in some places too. But what, what's, the, what's the game for the world? Well, there's bocce ball and there's bocce ball in Hawaii, but just a few here and there that play. Uh, lawn bowls is international now. Uh, bocce ball, you see a lot more of it in Italy than maybe lawn bowls, but you go to any of the, um, well, like I say, Australia, New Zealand, any of the British Isles, you know, it's mostly all uh, lawn bowls. Uh, lawn bowls, there, gosh, I think there's like eight clubs in California alone, all yeah. the way up and down the coast. Uh, New York Central Park has a lawn bowls club. There's clubs in Tennessee. There's clubs all over the place. So it might not be a lot, but they are all over the place. It's growing. It's definitely growing. And well, Canada, yeah. too. Well, I understand that in the UK, it's something that's a part of people's lives. They know about this game. They play this game from childhood. Mm -hmm. What I hear from people I've talked to about it, that it's a part of their, they go looking for lawn bowls when they visit other countries. And they don't usually find that many in the US. Um, and, that, and that's why we would like them to know that if there is one in Hawaii. Right. <laughs> And they come, they come on the, when we have an annual tournament, which we call the Barefoot Bowls, they're, we're getting a lot of UK members. A lot of uh, Canadian members will come from across yeah. and a lot from Vancouver particularly, but also from the East Coast and then from Australia that participate. And in those clubs, they often tell the stories of how they're, it's, a, it's a much more socializing aspect for restaurant, bar, facilities, games, and on site. And people go to eat, drink, and then also play bowls together, which is an interesting oh, yeah. that's, that kind of from what we do here. Yeah, that's a great picture. That's from our um, Barefoot Bowls tournament. And after the tournament on the final day, we have a luau barbecue uh, and then play some other fun games or activities too, just to kind of joke around. But uh, uh, we do have that's that's from the barbecue that we have each year after that. And hopefully we'll be back doing it next February. Well, the Barefoot Bowls tournament, now you said that was canceled for 2020, right? But for 20, no, we had it in 2020 because it was right before, right smack before everything closed down and, and everybody went back home. And, uh, and But we're having it again. Or we wanted to have it in 2021, but of course we couldn't because things are still 
flows. They and they can't come in. They can't even leave Australia to come here right now. All the Aussie teams that wanted to come, Canada, same thing. They're still basically locked down in Canada. So uh, there was no reason to try to hold an international tournament, you know, while COVID was still going on. But we're hoping 2022 uh, we will have it again. Well, so talk, talk, talk about the barefoot part of the Bulls tournament. What does that mean, the bare, barefoot? Uh, <laughs> the same question. It's, it's, a, it's casual. And actually, it's quite funny because I noticed uh, when we started having those that the Aussies, definitely the men loved playing barefoot. They thought it was really cool, even though normally, no, you're not playing barefoot. Uh, but we call it the barefoot balls because we're here in Hawaii. If you want to play barefoot, you can play barefoot. <laughs> Take your own chances with your dropping a ball, a bowl on your foot, but you can play that way if you want. <laughs> Most people wear shoes. It's <laughs> <laughs> perfectly fine to be healed. <laughs> is there a recommendation because of the quality of the green or the greens needs to be cared for? What What is the requirement on shoes? Can you wear any kind of shoes out there or golf shoes or what do you wear? Oh, nothing with spikes like a golf shoe. No, it would have to be just a regular athletic shoe. Athletic shoe or you can do it barefoot here in Hawaii. Barefoot come with flip-flop slippers. Mm -hmm. Yes, some even do flip-flops. That's true. <laughs> so, um, isn't the barefoot balls usually held at night, as, as I recall? Was no, it's all day. It's a Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday all day. The uh, championship is usually Friday afternoon. And then Friday evening is when we have the barbecue and the luau. And then Saturday is our normal uh, social play. And usually all of the barefoot bowl entries will come back out on the Saturday. And we'll just do random draws and, and play those games just for fun. Mm -hmm. Well, I know we had another um, topic here to go into the fundamentals of the game. Um, uh, Shannon or, or Barry, do you want to talk about uh, how you keep, how, what's the scoring? Can you tell us a little bit about, well, first of all, how many balls does each person have? Maybe we go into some of the more specifics of the game. Shannon, you want to tell us? Certainly. So the games are usually played with three to four. A set of bowls comes as a set of four and they're different weights. I, I, it starts from about a weight of one to a weight of five, and that's by the, the, the heaviness of the bowl that you hold. And then we've got, and that includes also the size. So persons with smaller hands would use perhaps a smaller number. And then you have got the bias of the bowl, which is it's weighted to curve on the green in a particular direction, depending on how you roll it. And so, so the game. Mm -hmm. what, which number, what size do men use and what do women use? What's the, is it the matter of the size of the hands or the ability to? lift the weight of a ball? Uh, probably, well, a little bit of both, but I, like, for example, I'm using a size four. Barry, do you know what size you use? Yeah, mine's a size four heavy. Okay. So and, now the heavy, how, how heavy is that bowl? What's heavy? Five, <laughs> 10, six? That's a few more ounces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that's, that's a really good question. I'm not sure what the exact weight is. It probably feels like about three to four pounds. Mm -hmm. To me, I guess. Well, I know with with Shannon, we chatted a little bit yesterday, and I, he had such good ideas about bringing in community groups to familiarize the community with with this this game. And then we even talked about children. I mean, certainly high school students could do this. Would oh, be elementary, even if it's older yeah. elementary. Uh, and you're thinking also uh, intermediate schools, but mm -hmm. not the little kids mm -hmm. lift the balls, right? Um, bringing in, you know, the, the, the youngster, the really young ones, the first, second, third graders. But I mean, I mean, I mean, I wonder when they start them in the UK. I mean, people are, I guess, taking their kids to the, to, to the balls and they're playing around with it. Well, anyway, I was just curious because I do have a five-year-old grandchild and I was thinking, oh, it would be really good to see what she could do with one of those balls at five to see if that's any, they could even pick up. I mean, but that's, you know, the beginning of school, but- They do um, make children's bowls, as I found online. So mm -hmm. in those countries where they start the kids younger in elementary school, even they have smaller bowls that they're using. We don't have those smaller bowls at the club. So ours are more for maybe an intermediate age student on up. I think we've had probably eight or nine uh, year olds 
that that have been able to yeah, right. I think throw do. our our size zero <laughs> bowls. Yeah. We have a, we have a couple of of sets of size zero. Oh, yeah. great. Well, uh, I think uh, that's that's another idea is to have a junior league, right? Um, uh, if if they wanted to come out and do that, um, but. Um, I was just um, thinking that uh, knowing how to score it is another piece of the game that's very important. And I know when I was playing for a while, I found that very challenging. Can you talk about that score just a little bit? It's not like bowling in the alley or in the, with the big balls. Barry, can you talk about that scoring? Or Judy, you're an expert at it. Because well, no, Barry did a little bit earlier. So go ahead, Bear. Yeah, well, I think probably the best person for that is, is Shannon, since he's the one who actually scored the highest in our last tournament and was yeah. the winner of a tournament. Uh, so he's pretty Trained good. Trained by Judy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so whoever, you know, got got the bowl uh, closest to the jack gets gets a point or up to however many bowls that you had uh, between you and your partner uh, that were closer than the opponents. So I guess in some situations we have triples, so there could be three sets of three. So you could have potential up to nine points uh, that you could get at one end. And then when you go to the next end, you know, it starts all over again. If you won, you get to do the toss and determine where the jack is going to land. So if it's going to be a long roll or it's going to be a short roll. Um, and then from there, you know, it starts all over again. Whoever gets closest again gets gets the points. If you don't get closest, you get nothing. Okay, so you only get the point when you when you get close either when you're the closest to the jack. Yeah, so, when you're the closest, yes. Yeah. So I mean it is it is a little different, or maybe it's just me, but I mean I just think that it's a little different way to um to think about the game. I mean, there aren't any um detractions. I mean, you don't lose anything, you only gain. From the ball so okay we'll talk That's about right. the social aspects i know um shannon you can talk about the advantages of being there um to your to your mental health and to your well-being and to your social life now how does it improve all those things what's wonderful about this sport is that there's a almost a zen meditative component to it and that there you're, you're rolling a, a ball that's the size of a softball basically and you're learning how to control body motion but also your thought process in a psychological sense to deliver an, on a routine you know pendulum through a roll using you know knees and ankles to bend down and release and then you're watching that as you're aiming it towards the jack on the other end of the green and so you sort of you psychologically prepare yourself for that so there is this aspect of play and downtime play and downtime and then within the club on the other side of it is you get a wonderful chance to meet your other members that are playing with you and converse with them or on either end of the rink or you know, on, on the lane. So there's a lot of uh, ability of time to meet new people when, uh, when coming to play. And we also do as part of you know, after the bowls, people gather together to have a snack together and discuss you know, just life, politics, their you know, work, <laughs> business. It's yeah. a nice time to spend together. Well, and I think people are so very devoted to it. They are, uh, yeah, really. And um, I think they, they share that in the way they play the game and, and sometimes they're very concentrated on it. So when people come in, they can see um, that kind of uh, um, focus and attention on it, but they can also see that people are having a lot of fun. Yeah, it is good. Well, it's about a hot time for us and we'll, we'll have to wrap up unless there's some final comments anybody would like to um, add. Do you have any final comments? Let's see, go with each one of you. Judy, can you say something else? I just want to mention our next tournament coming up is a mixed doubles tournament. It will be held April 24th. Uh, and we're asking club players to be there by 930 in the morning. And it'll probably run till about four. And I can't really invite people to come and watch because of the COVID thing and the numbers. But I guess if they're in the park that day and want to come over and look over the wall and see what's going on and watch the game a little bit. They can learn a little bit that way and maybe decide to come out the following weekend. And that'll be on the website, right? If we can put the website up again uh, one more time, um, thank you. Um, so that you'll have that announcement on the website so they can go check if they see this.
doesn't want to come, they'll know where to go check. I've seen that's on the website. Is it Barry? Are you doing that, or is Brian doing the website? Yeah, that Brian's got that up there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Some uh, final comments. Yeah, I would just say, hey, please come by at 9:30 if you're interested over at our location in the Alamoana Beach Park, uh, the place where you've got a big <laughs> white brick. Uh, wall around it. That's where we are. So show up at 930 on a Saturday and we would be happy to show you around, and introduce you to the game of bowls. Also, if you have any questions, uh, give us, shoot us an email at directors at honolulambowls.com. Okay. And thank you. And, thank you. And, and Shannon, um, any comments? Yes, patience. It can take weeks or months. Don't be surprised if it takes half a year to get good at the game. It looks so simple to do. But it's a lot of fun in terms of you gaining skill with such a simple movement of the body and, and, and rolling the ball across the green. And it, it's it's interesting. It's uh, I, I really appreciated that through the practice that often I have done, you know, through on the weekends or in the evenings, you get better and better. And then you're just amazed that one day it starts clicking and, and that's where you get excited. Yeah. That's and the, the thing is, you're going to have a fun, fun time with everybody there while you're learning. It's great. Well, I um, am delighted to know more about it and uh we've been talking remotely with shannon fagan judy rasmussen and uh barry white about hawaii's lawn bowling club in the ala moana beach park and that looks like you are invited on saturday mornings and very welcome to play with the group and their lessons and free free um, entry. Um, if you can just get yourself there, it's quite beautiful and you'll be delighted. I'll see you all again in two weeks on the next state of the state of Hawaii. Mahalo for your attention. Everyone, thank you. And Thank you. Thanks. Yeah.